Our tax system doesn't reward work, savings, and investment, and that should be the goal, rewarding work, savings, and investment. Uh, and finally, it's very subject to manipulation. In fact, I've spent a couple of years in Washington, and I can tell you, most of the lobbyists on K Street are there for a reason, and it's not to get an earmark, it's to ask for favorable provisions in our tax code, a special deduction, credit, or exemption. So if you're concerned about special interests, let's simplify the tax code. So what's the optimal system to simplify it? Again, with the caveat that I'm running to be one of 435 members, uh, but give you some sense of, of the sort of reforms I would favor. I would so favor scrapping our existing complicated system and replacing it either with a consumption-based tax, some sort of national sales tax. The fair tax is one variant of that, something you may be familiar with or a flatter tax code, one with fewer brackets, fewer credits, deductions, and exemptions. That would be kind of my emphasis there. Um, there is a really neat system that Hong Kong adopted years ago, and we call it uh, the Freedom of Choice Tax Act, something like that. And what it would do, it would allow people, as in Hong Kong, to stay in the current complicated tax code if you're wedded to your deductions, credits, exemptions. If you like our current system, for whatever reason, you can stay in it. But if you want a simpler system, you can adopt this uh, flat tax system like they have in Hong Kong. And what we find in Hong Kong is the new, that system is so popular, the, the new flat tax, that no one even knows they have that complicated outdated old system anymore. They've all gravitated towards uh, the new system. That tells me another thing. People would actually probably pay a little more in taxes if their taxes were simpler. Think about it. I don't pay, I don't do my own taxes every year. I do most years, but there's some years where I just say, you know what, let's give this to Mr. H&R Block. And I'll pay a few hundred dollars to ask somebody else to do my taxes. <clears throat> If I could stay at home and fill out my taxes on a postcard or on a single sheet of paper and not collect all these receipts and whatnot throughout the year, I'd be willing to pay a few hundred dollars more. That same money that was going to go to H&R Block. So, um, so tax simplification is certainly, and I see some small business people in the audience shaking their heads because I can tell you I come from a small business family and it was tax compliance, it was every bit as painful on my father as the tax rates themselves. Those are my thoughts. You have any follow-ups? Because that's a big issue. It is yeah. a big issue. There's, yeah. there's a huge variance between the conservatives, you know, out there regarding fair tax, flat tax, yeah. and our current system. And so and it's it's interesting to hear your viewpoint. I appreciate that. Sure. Flat tax is something that I want to favor. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there was a there was a editorial in the journal today about value added tax and how it's can be a lot stinkier than what meets the eye, as particularly in regards to food. So uh, the, the the VAT may not. Well, be I the wasn't advocating here. a VAT. Yeah, the, but, uh, distinction between the consumption tax and the VAT. Um, and, and the VAT is a value-added tax. It's something they it's have a sales tax. in in Europe. Well, they for each stage of production of any given item, they they tax the new value you've added to it, okay? So if you're building, let me think of a good example here. Uh, give me. The food is a, is a perfect example. Yeah. If the food is used for human consumption, that could be a tax, but if it's used for your animals, it'd be different, unless you could also eat it, mm -hmm. and then it would be taxed. I mean, they've got, this, well, you read the article. Yeah. I, mean, I think I read the same article, and that's, uh, that's a good problem. Wasn't it? It's a kind of, but my concern, every time they bring up that, I cringe, because I know no one in Washington is talking about scrapping our existing right. tax it's just code or getting rid of that. That's right. And, and adopting a VAT. It's, it's going to be an add-on <coughs> tax. And I especially cringe because the first person I heard mention it in recent months was Nancy Pelosi. She was, um, and that's not, that's not an ad hominem kind of cheap shot attack. She was looking for more revenue to pay for their health care reforms and pay for other goodies she wanted to shower upon the American people. And uh, so that's why she was looking at a new tax, not replacing the existing code because it's inefficient or unfair. So. 
So I would be very much against the VAT tax, adopting any variant thereof. And look, we need to focus on cutting spending. That's really what the focus should be. Uh, there's far too much, much waste in Washington. There are even things that we just need to, we need to reconsider. Uh, uh, we need to take a look at the Constitution again. And if it's not in there, either push it back to the states or local governments or private individuals, uh, or get rid of it altogether. Because right now, again, having done this for 16 months, I can tell you about every family in Indiana's 9th Congressional District is setting priorities right now. Every business is setting priorities, but Washington isn't, and that needs to change. <coughs> well, uh, means testing is coming down the pike uh, for Social Security and Medicare. Uh, so tell us your thoughts about means testing, and what, sure. what's going to be the compensation of the people who are going to be means tested? Yeah. The question is means testing, which is a kind of a Washington term. I'm going to turn this off. I have a habit of keeping it on because my wife was pregnant for all those months and I was kept it on. Uh, means testing means, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the term, is, is uh, you, you determine based on income level whether or not someone should receive a particular government benefit, right? So uh, that's my shorthand version there of means testing. and. People have talked about applying it to, say, Social Security benefits so that we can make that program sustainable. Okay, let me broaden the question a little bit and just talk about means testing and our entitlement situation more generally. And if I don't answer your question, please follow up. Uh, right now, we have $60 trillion in unfunded liabilities at the federal level of government. Now, Unfunded liabilities, that's basically just, that's how corporations are required to keep their books. In other words, if you commit to certain spending in the future, then uh, you, you keep it on the books. And Congress has committed us to $60 trillion looking into the future, and has no idea how it's going to pay for all this stuff. So I did the math a while back, and that's about $500,000 for every family of four in America. So that's where we're at today ladies and gentlemen. If you think of all your existing obligations, credit card debt, mortgage, whatnot, it's probably not excessive, but if you were to add on to that $500,000, um, that's pretty overwhelming. You almost throw your hands up and say, how are we going to deal with this? Well, it's going to be tough. We're going to have to make some tough decisions and fess up with the American people. And one of the things that's been proposed is means testing some programs like Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. In other words, if you can pay for your own retirement, uh, if you can pay for your basic medical expenses, uh, all these sorts of things, then maybe we're not going to give you as much Medicare, <coughs> Medicaid, Social Security. Um, look, that's, that is going to have to be one of the things that's uh, contemplated. Let me be very clear about this, though, because I. I it, Anytime you start talking about this, this concerns our seniors. We have to take care of those who have planned for years and years and years on receiving a certain stream of, of uh, benefits when they retire. Um, I, I think it's immoral, you know, two years before you retire, the federal government up all, says we're going to change the rules of the game fundamentally here. And uh, you didn't sock away a whole lot of money for retirement, believing that there would be some money there uh, to take care of you. But for people like myself, age 37, you know, and there are others around the room my age or younger, not too much older than that, look, um, I think we're going to have to readjust our expectations about how much the government's going to pay us when we retire for our health care, for retirement. We're going to have to start socking away more of our own money for our own retirement and health care. Um, so that generally is, is my thought about this. It's going to take some tough decisions. We're going to have to look at the retirement age as, as people um, live longer. We're going to have to take a look at means testing. And we'll have to take a look at, at how all these programs are structured. The, yeah. the means testing, is that just not another way to redistrib redistribute the wealth? Yeah. I mean, why penalize some of the older people that have been fiscally responsible compared to people that have and, and, and how would how do you feel with that? Sure. I mean, 
Yeah, I, 